Hello! About three weeks ago, I asked you guys for questions about editing, and it took me a while, but I'm finally here to record the answers for those questions that you may have. I have quite a few questions, so I'm gonna do my best to answer them, you know, to the best of my ability. So let's just roll right into it. Where do you get most of your music? Specific sites? Or anytime you hear a song you like, you note that and see where to download it. A lot of the music I use, I just kind of scroll through YouTube to find them. Especially if it's a very specific kind, I just kind of type it in and see if I can find something. But especially the most important thing is to include no copyright, you know, song. A channel that I quite especially use is called Audio Library Music for Content Creators. Basically, they just upload a whole bunch of copyright free songs. So you can use them without worrying about getting claims or even strikes. And those are the ones you want to watch out for. <laughs> I also tend to use a lot of music from No Copyright Sounds, another channel that does give cover for your music. The difference between the two of them is that the first one offers a lot more just kind of like chill music or like you know, maybe background music, whereas the other one kind of includes music kind of like, you know, EDM. There is kind of a like a genre between the two. A lot of the songs I use sometimes also just comes from games like Genshin Impact or Mario, Zelda, wherever. But another side I get my music from is Monster Cat. I do have a license that allows me to play at least the licensable music on my videos. I got that very recently. It's been pretty handy. So you may want to look out for sites like that where you can buy a license and you can have an access to a wide range of songs. They're pretty nice. How do you transition between gameplay and face cam? So transitioning from face cam to gameplay is kind of dependent on how you want to do things. Most of the time, Whenever you record anything with face cam, usually people would have it just, you know, like a little box, maybe one of the corners, and then, you know, you're just off to the races. Shouldn't your PC allow it, you can have two instances of OBS running, one that has the game that, as you can see, to the one over there, and then also one right here that records the face cam. That way, you have full control of the webcam portion of the video, allowing you to move it around wherever you want, but if your computer can't handle such an egregious task, that's perfectly fine. You can just have your webcam sit in the corner of the video. And you can just, you know, do simple things such as zoom in on the webcam, zoom out. As far as transitions go, the only really way I can think of is just you have the full kind of you know, game with you in the corner. And if something happens and you react to it in maybe like a comedic way, just focus completely on the webcam. No need to do some fancy transition. It's quite simple. How long does it take to edit a full video? So I've seen quite a few of these kind of questions of how long it takes for me to edit videos. Editing videos varies depending on complexity. Videos as simple as gaming videos for myself or even for Vian, those take maybe, you know, like a few hours, maybe even a day. Not in total time though, mind you. Like, you know, maybe I'll edit for like a few hours, take a break or continue the next day. But I guess in total hours, it may be taking like, you know, maybe three, four, I don't know. Depending on, again, the complexity, I actually have done on stream before where I edited clip videos for VN on stream, and those take me a few hours to do. It's definitely different though when comparing it to like full length recordings. So some videos are also quite complicated to edit and would take quite a while, like that video I did of comparing editing softwares. That one took me several days to edit altogether. So it does vary. But if you're mainly just doing gaming videos, it's pretty easy. If it's a vlog, it might take you some more time. But if you're just kind of starting out, you don't have to worry too much about complicated edits and of the such. What would be a good app to edit with on a bad computer? That is kind of a difficult thing to answer. If you have a bad computer, then that would be under the assumption that you don't have a whole lot of money to spare for a good computer. And under that basis, I'd say maybe go DaVinci Resolve as it's free. But if you can scrape together some money for um, editing software, I would probably recommend something like VideoPad. It's not the best editing software, but it's kind of lightweight. I used to use it a whole lot before I switched to Premiere back when I was editing on like some 2012 MacBook Pro. But I would also recommend saving money for a decent computer. It doesn't need to be like a, like a multi-thousand dollar computer, but at least one that can at least hold its power. What programs do I use and how do I voice over my videos and how to take them out or using transitions for streams? This one's kind of a long-winded question. The kind of software that I use is quite simple. I use OBS right here, as you can see, to record and stream. 
and then I use Adobe Premiere to edit all my videos, sometimes using After Effects for some extra, you know, special things, as well as Photoshop for making thumbnails. Oh my god, that wasn't- that was on the same layer? Oh my god. It's kind of funny, this question about the voice, because I had only just realized that one of my microphone tracks was on the wrong uh, track, so it's a good thing I have two. <laughs> in OBS, in the settings, you can find in the recording section, audio tracks. There are six boxes, and you can check whichever one. This is very handy. So let's say, for me, I have three audio tracks checked. The three audio tracks that I have is one for any game audio, so you know, whether it's desktop audio or from the Elgato, and then two for microphone. One that has a bunch of filters on it, and one without any filters on it, just in case if I decide to use either one. And just now, it saved my butt. So it's important to remember that each audio source should be unchecked from other tracks. That way you can have just the one isolator for each track. That way you can control each track without interfering with the other. This is something I kind of wish I knew early on, as it would have been nice to have complete control of the audio. But another option is just using a voice recorder and then plugging that into a video after. But if you choose to do that option, it's important to remember to do something in the game as well as say something in order to sync up the audio. An example would be moving a menu up and down while saying up, down, up, down, or you know maybe counting, so that way you know that as you say it, something should be moving on screen. Up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. But if you do the OBS option, audio will just be automatically synced up. What is the best way to connect two clips together so it'll be a smooth transition? As far as transitions goes, there's two things you need to make sure of when you're transitioning. That your audio is fine and your video isn't too jerky. For audio, what this means is that you don't want to have something suddenly cut. Like, let's say someone's talking and you just suddenly cut them off. I mean, it could be fine for comedic purposes, but let's say they're talking and you just suddenly cut and move on to the next clip. It can cause kind of a bit of a hitch in the audio. You want to avoid stuff like that, even for other sound effects. Okay, I'm going to do a countdown. And then I'm going to unmute and we're going to be live. Oh, we're already live. You're live now, right? Yes. <laughs> you may not. Which is cool about today. Wait, who are you? Who um, hello. My name is Zach. Sometimes it's funny for comedic purposes where you just suddenly interrupt someone talking or you just suddenly cut out a sound because you just wanted to play for a few seconds. But it's something to remember, though. That if your intent was just to, you know, skip through stuff, you want to make sure that you don't have that sudden jump. Here's a pretty good example. You can see in this clip, the moment I stop talking is when I choose to cut to the next area. I'm not going to go down because down is where Baldwin, I think. My notifications on my watch, man. For video, you don't really need fancy transitions, I'd say, because I just do simple jump cuts. And honestly, I feel like that's perfectly fine. This also kind of rolls into another question of can there be too much of using them and also some alternatives? Sometimes you may want to use a more fancy transition if you want. That's perfectly fine. But the important thing is to not overdo it because think of like a PowerPoint presentation, kind of a bad comparison. I don't know. But when you think of a PowerPoint presentation, how do you feel when someone uses for every slide some wacky animation that takes like five seconds? No one enjoys that. You just want to get to the point. That's why if you choose to do a transition, make sure it's a transition that doesn't take too long, it's pretty quick. One that I use sometimes is a cross dissolve where the opacity for one video goes out as the opacity for the next video comes in. And they kind of like, you know, cross over each other. But if you want to go for a slightly more complicated transition, you can do something called a J-cut. A J-cut is a type of transition where the audio from the next clip starts being played but the video from the previous clip is still going until a desired point. You're a VR, right? Cool. Cool. Stop it! I know what you're doing! <laughs> no! This is something I've done in Vian's videos as I've tried to emulate his style a bit more, and he was doing a lot in Animal Crossing videos. I've used it a few times on my videos, but not a whole lot. But it's something that you can do. It's pretty simple, and there are tutorials you can follow if you desire to do that kind of thing. What is the best way to start a video if you don't really have a proper intro? Same thing goes for ending the video. For starting videos, if you want, you can go with a kind of, I guess, <laughs> generic kind of intro of the, you know, Hey guys, it's YouTuber name here. Hello everyone, this is Vianca Block here. I am back with Minecraft. 
but if you don't want to do that kind of thing because it kind of a little weird then you can just simply you know roll into the video you know, with whatever is going on okay so i swear i'm an idiot you know sometimes you just gotta think what are you doing you know it's funny i had already initially recorded this video but i didn't realize to check my settings in obs and it didn't record my microphone at all so now i gotta do this again <laughs> sometimes for my videos you know i just kind of like kind of go like well this is kind of happening a lot of my early videos i did the whole you know like hello guys it's me michael block here hello everyone this is me michael block here but now i kind of stopped doing that and i kind of just go right in you don't need some like you know script or anything you can just kind of say what kind of comes to mind as long as it doesn't sound too awkward <laughs> as for outros it's kind of also the same thing for outros i quite often do you know like thanks for watching like subscribe all the good stuff see you next time but sometimes you can also just have the video cut off when something happens. As I've done it before where maybe I freak out at something and then boom, end of video. Yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff. See you next time. Oh god, yep. Ah! <laughs> Unbelievable! Even though I use kind of a whole like outro video too, you don't really need to do something like that. Sometimes just ending the video, maybe like leave a few seconds before the video ends. That's perfectly fine too. But if you want to, then you can also do an outro kind of thing, like how I do mine, or even maybe Vian, or Epi, or Fyrus, or even Octoboy. To spice up a video a little, when do you decide to use audio clips or text and stuff? And how do you decide when? It kind of comes down to personal preference, I'd say, because of how you want to do your videos. Sometimes I want to include text, maybe to point out something that someone says, maybe because what they said was kind of funny. The VN Tass Tower. VN Tower Stick. Tower Tastic? You know, like I'll maybe like kind of subtitle it in the video. Or maybe when I'm editing VN's videos, I just put text. It's kind of like, you know, my response to him. Even for like video clips or audio clips that I include in some videos, it's really like, you know, kind of comes down to like your own sense of comedy. Like maybe something kind of funny happens. Maybe I use a duck sound or maybe something awkward happens and I use the bamboo hit sound. Maybe something sudden happens, and then I do the Metal Gear Solid alert sound. Or maybe something funny happens, and I also just use a laughing track. <laughs> so, like, I feel like one of the best ways to say is, when you use audio clips or even text, you kind of maybe want to use it to, like, to put focus on something. Like, let's say I clap my hands, then I would use it, maybe I wanted to make that very noticeable, then you would use a much more louder audio clip, or maybe just boost the audio of that clap. Take my Bluetooth earphone case as an example. Let's say, you know, as I throw it around in between my hands, maybe I'll put some whooshing sound effects. I don't know, maybe like a yeet sound effect from when I throw it back. And maybe once it impacts the bed, maybe I'll do like a hit sound of it, kind of like signifying that, oh, it took a strong hit, even though it's on a bed. <laughs> some examples I can think of of following for sound effects could be maybe Smitty. He uses a lot of sound effects for his videos. I got some funny ass kills with the, the wheel sim so far. Speaking of funny ass kills. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh my God. Where are you running, boy? You think I can't follow you through there, boy? Get your ass out of here with that shit. Even Lily Peach uses a lot of sound effects too. I want a DDR or something like that. Do you, do you just not give a shit anymore? Hi. 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 I woke up really early for this sh I actually got to voice act in it and cameo in it. So we're gonna be trying- You stupid sub notification! Dumb! This is just me but zombified, okay? It's nothing anything different. What is the biggest tip you can give someone that just started out editing? Something you wish you knew earlier on? Something that I feel like kind of knew more early on is it's kind of important to edit your videos more because early on I did just kind of, you know, like record, send it to YouTube, and that was it. And also, something that I picked up much later on was how when you have blanks in audio, it's kind of fine to take out that blank and, you know, move on, move whatever is playing ahead. If a video doesn't have webcam to see you, then it's easier to do this. If you don't, then... But if you do have face cam it is kind of harder to do this because you would want to have the audio sync with your face 
But I do it a lot in maybe even Animal Crossing videos where whenever there's a long blank, or maybe I make mistakes in my speech, I just take out those parts and then I move the correct parts together. So now it sounds like a more fluid talking rather than those moments where it sounds like I'm just kind of stuttering a lot or there's a lot of pauses in my talking. Okay, that's the area cleared. Now, the next thing I want to do is open up the Island Designer. Now, the next thing I want to do is open up the Island Designer app because I want to use the pathing tool for the, like, dirt path. Okay, that's the area cleared. Now, the next thing I want to do is open up the Island Designer app because I want to use the pathing tool for the, like, dirt path. It's a good way to shorten videos, as well as make the video feel a lot less awkward when you're talking. Another thing too, that I probably mentioned earlier, was using the multiple audio tracks in OBS. Because for the longest time I didn't do something like that, you know, I, would, I would have all my game audio and microphone audio kind of jumbled up together until I decided to start using a voice recorder. But that's kind of like a jank solution. How do you make any image transparent? This one's kind of difficult. I do this in Photoshop using the magic wand tool. So it's kind of easier to do it there. But easy options I'd say is go on Google, search up whatever you're looking for with transparent background and then there'll be quite a lot of results and maybe you'll find the one that you're looking for with a transparent background. But if you're trying to make something with a transparent background, you're gonna need some kind of, you know, photo editing software like Photoshop. Doesn't need to be necessarily Photoshop, but it's kind of an option. But it definitely has to be a photo editing software, a graphic software that allows transparent backgrounds. Another option could be that you have an image that's on a green background. Then you can do something like, you know, keying out that image, maybe with an ultra key or something. I don't know what it is for your editing software. I would say you have to look it up specifically for your editing software. For Premiere, it's called Ultra Key, I believe. And that allows me to take out that specific color, like the green out of a background. So that way, whatever is there will have a transparent background. How do you get rid of sounds slash noises such as mic, static, or chair movement without affecting the video slash video game you are recording? So it goes back to the whole OBS multi-track that I mentioned. By having those multiple tracks for your audios, you can take out any excessive noise that might be happening without affecting the game audio. But a thing to note is that OBS does have filters that you can apply onto your microphone. For me, I use a mixture of a compressor, a noise gate, a limiter, and a noise suppression. All right, so here's our example here. If you look at mic slash aux 2, the bottom there, you can see the green bar goes up whenever it picks up any sound. So even if I go silent, it's still kind of reacting. And it especially picks up sometimes sound, like when I move my hand across my desk, click on my mouse, and most especially, type on my keyboard. So now first off, we activate noise suppression, which drastically lowers the kind of sounds that the microphone can pick up, especially the low hums of the, the computer. Then by applying a noise gate, it will not activate unless there are certain sounds to reach the threshold. So now if I type on the keyboard, can't hear it. Whereas if I turn off the noise gate, you can hear it. Now for the limiter, the purpose of it really is just to control how loud the microphone can reach. This is something that's kind of handy because sometimes in games when things get kind of tough or serious, sometimes I might shout or scream, I don't know which one was going to happen. Having the limiter helps control that level. That way, it doesn't go too high. But it does affect the audio a little bit, but you know, it's just something nice to have. And then compressor, which drastically changes the audio completely. You can tune it to however you want, but remember for any of these settings, if you go way too aggressive on them, it can really mess up your audio. So you may want to look up some kind of tutorial on following this kind of thing. What are editing programs you recommend and editing programs you don't? Preferably any free. Like I said before, DaVinci Resolve is a decent free option, but I would recommend that if you can scrape the money together, get an editing software like maybe Premiere, it's on a subscription basis and it kind of sucks about that, but honestly, Premiere has served me well for so long now, for like, I think two years now, I've used it now, and I absolutely love it. 
even when I compared it to the other editing softwares. Final Cut was really the only one that came close, but even then, I kind of struggled using it, whereas Premiere is just so smooth. And also, Final Cut is also an Apple thing, so, you know, if you do use Macs, then Final Cut is an option, or iMovie. If I recall correctly, iMovie is a free editing software for Macs, so that is also an option for you. I know the Final Cut and iMovie are pretty lightweight for their editing software, so, you know, if, again, for like that whole, if you don't have an amazing computer, but if you do have a Mac, I guess, then that's an option. I would absolutely recommend you to never use Avid Media Composer. I absolutely hate that thing with a passion. Sony Vegas, I was kind of on a fence about. Probably if I had more experience with it, maybe I would have liked it a bit more. I don't know. Cereal or milk first? Cereal first. You are a monster if you put milk first. And that's basically all the questions. All these questions were kind of like similar, but you know what? It's perfectly fine though because it kind of shows that this is something that people do want to know about. I hope that my answers were enlightening to some of you. If you do still have some questions, I may run this kind of thing again, but you can also just ask me on stream for any other editing tips. And I would also recommend looking up tutorials for some things. It is kind of difficult to find tutorials for like a broader sense of things, but for specific things, you can find some pretty decent tutorials for them. I often use tutorials to help me do kind of very complicated things like effects or transitions but it is something that you can do and I would actually kind of recommend and overall I just say just keep editing I was bad when I started and now I'm pretty decent at editing now I'm definitely far from being the best editor out there but I like to think that I'm also not terrible I feel like that's kind of evident by the fact that I still kind of hold my editing job for being <laughs> this video is not going to age well if I end up losing that job though <laughs> Yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. And this is, this was quite educational. But anyway, it was kind of fun to also do. Yeah, see you next time. Ooh, bye.